So now that we can simplify rational expressions, we want to be able to combine them in other ways. And we needed that last section of the LCM in order to do what we're going to do in this section, trying to add rational expressions together. So what has to happen? To add when the denominators are already the same, we just add the numerators, keep the same denominators. And if we can, we want to simplify. So it's very much like adding, you know, rational numbers together. We need a common denominator. Same story if we throw in variables. We still need to have common denominators in order to combine them. So the first few examples are pretty straightforward. We already have common denominators. So what are we doing? Add across the top x plus 2 and keep that same denominator, x plus 1. And in the end, we always want to check, can we simplify that down any farther? Next one. Again, same denominator, so we're going to end up with the same denominator. And I have addition in between there, so I just need to combine my like terms in the numerator and simplify it. So I've got 2x squared and 1x will give me 3x squared. 3x and 1x will give me 4x. And negative 7 and negative 8 will give me negative 15. We want to see if we can break that down at all any farther. No. We could try to factor the numerator, but again, 3 is prime. So our only options are 3 and 1. We'll never get a 2 out on the front to be able to cancel it out. So that's done. Next one. Again, same denominator. So we add the numerator. So I have x and no more x's. So I got one of those. And negative 5 plus 2. So I get out negative 3. But in this case, can we simplify a little bit farther? We can because the denominator is what? It's a difference of squares. And how does it factor? x plus 3, x minus 3. So now, since everything is factored, we can look common up top and down below that we can cancel out of both. Is that entire factor, x minus 3, we're left with 1 over x plus 3. You always want to ask in the end, are we done? Can we go any farther? Nope, we're finished there. So let's start looking at if we don't have common denominators. So to add rational expressions with different denominators, what do we have to do? We have to work towards common ones. Work towards common denominators. And the benefit of the last section is we can work towards the least common denominator, the smallest that I can work with. So in the end, we don't have to do a whole lot of simplification work, but maybe just a little. So this first example, how do we want to start? We don't have common denominators, so we need to work towards it. So I want to break 8 and 12 down into factors just to see what they share in common. We don't have to break it all the way down, for example, because I know that they share a factor of 4. So I don't need to break that into 2 and 2. I can just break it down into 4 and 2 and 4 and 3. So exactly the same expression if we break up the factors. 12 can be broken into 4 times 3. 8 can be broken into 4 times 2. And this is what I was talking about when we build the least common denominator, or the least common multiple. It just happens to be in the denominator. It's a little bit easier. Because now we can look between these factors as they sit right here. We don't have to do the books method and work off on the side to figure out the least common denominator. Because we can ask, what is this one missing that the other one has? We already share the factor of 4, we're missing the factor of 3. So whatever I do to the bottom, I also have to do to the top. Because we don't want to change it entirely, we just want to make it look different. Because what is 3 divided by 3? 1. It's changing what it looks like. But the same story we have to ask over here. What is this one missing that this one has? A factor of 2. And again, whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top because I'm really just multiplying by 1. Changing what it looks like, not changing the expression altogether. 
So equivalent to our beginning, what are we working with now? Up top, I've got 15x squared, and my least common denominator, 8 times 3 is 24. And over with this term, 7 times 2 is 14, and I've got an x left over. And now we share that common denominator. And specifically, it's the least common, it's the smallest that we can work with. So we have those common denominators now. What can we do? Add straight across the top. Keep the same denominator. And we always want to get into the habit of factoring down as far as we can go. So we can see if anything will cancel. Even if it won't, still good habit to get into. So common between these top ones, top terms that we can take out of both, is a factor of x. When we take out an x, what are we left with? 15x plus 14 all over 24. So now that it is completely factored, we can see, is there anything that we can cancel top and bottom? No, they don't share anything in common, but very good practice to get into. Factor it all the way down to the end. So this next example is very similar to the last one that we just saw. We've already dealt with those constants, 8 and 12. We know the least common denominator, or multiple, is going to be 24. But we also have variables now. But the concept is still the same. We need to write out the common factors and look between them and build to our least common denominator. So let's take that. I know that I can break up 8 into 4 and 2. And I also have that factor of x tagging along. And in our second term, 12, I want to break it up into similar factors that I have over here. It can break up into 4 and 3, and I have two factors of x in that second term. So we want to look and build a common denominator so we can combine these. So we've got to ask, what is this one missing that the other one has? Factor of 3 and another factor of x. And whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. Because in reality, what are we multiplying by right here? 1. Changing what it looks like, not changing it all together. That's not allowed. We also need to build it over here. So, what is this one missing that the other one has? Factor of 2. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So let's simplify and write out our equivalent expression up top here. 3 times 3, 9x, all over our LCD of 24x squared. And I'm adding to that 5 times 2 will give me 10. And multiplying all of the denominators, again, should be common now. And since we have that common denominator, we can add across the top got 9x plus 10 over 24x squared. And we need to look. Are we done there? Can we factor? So is there anything common between these two terms that we can take out of both? No, but we want to double check. All right, so two for you. You're going to be working with similar constants, but a little bit of a mix with the variables. Combine those together. So in the first one, Common between 16 and 24 are factors of 8. So we can break it up into a large factor. We don't have to go down super small. So let's start breaking it up. 16 I can break into 8 and 2. And 24 we can break that into what? 8 and 3. So we could break it down all the way to the primes, but it's not necessary because we can see right now the factor that we already share in common. So let's build that common denominator. What is this one missing that the other one has? A factor of 3. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. And what are we missing over here? What is this one missing that the other one has? A factor of 2. Again, whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So let's simplify it. 3 times 3 will give me 9 times x. And our common denominator, 24 times 2, gives us 48. 
In our second term, that numerator turns into 10x squared all over 48. Now that we have those common denominators, we can combine the numerators together, and I like to have an in descending order. And addition is commutative, so I can change that order around, and it's legal. And that's all over 48. But we've got to factor down as far as we can go, just to check and make sure that we're actually done. So common between these two that we can take out of both is a factor of x, and when we take that out, what were you left with? 10x plus 9. So was there anything that we could cancel out? Nope, but we need to check. Got to get into the habit of checking. All right, so the second one, very similar. We can break up 16 and 24 into factors of 8 and something else. But we have to take into account these other variables as well. So let's see. 16 is going to break up as the same. I've got 8 times 2, and I've got x squared. So a little extra to carry along. And over here, what are we looking at? 24 is 8 times 3, and I still have x squared tagging along. So when we go to build our least common denominator here, are we going to be adding any more factors of x to either? No, because they already share these in common. They have the same factors of x squared. So what are we missing over here? Same story as what we had up there, a factor of 3. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. And over here, what is this one missing that the other one has? Factor of 2. So we can simplify across the top. I've got 3 times 3 will give me 9 over 48x squared. And second term. 2 times 5 up top will give me 10 over 48x squared. So when we combine those together, what are we looking at? 19 over 48x squared. Okay, can we break that down any farther? No, 19 and 48, they don't share any factors in common. 